My name is Jeremy. I was born in uh, Montgomery, Alabama in 1984. It was kind of me and my mom growing up. Um, you know, we uh, we lived in a somewhat rough side of town. I mean, it wasn't like a really affluent area, but um, you know, it was just me and her. Uh, my mom lost a, a, a son um, when I was born as a twin. From that point on, like I was uh, pretty much everything for my mom. She, uh, it was uh, almost to the point it was uh, a handicap and uh, didn't really know my dad. Um, stayed in sports a lot, played baseball in uh, middle school and high school. Got a baseball scholarship in college. And I was the kind of guy who, uh, who went to church and uh, was even involved in youth, the youth group there at church and even uh, kind of in the high school, I did FCA, Fellowship of Christian Athletes. You know, when I went to college, I, uh, I, I didn't understand that, um, I guess I didn't understand life was uh, life was life, and I didn't understand what I was what I was up against. And uh, I don't think at that point I really needed to, to depend on God like I would later need to do. So, you know, for me to sit here and be able to share with you guys, it's, it's kind of cool because, uh, you know, back in uh, 2007, I, I came out of college and um, I started uh, using some, I started using drugs recreationally. That you're talking to a guy who in middle school or high school or even in college some would, would tell you you know the drug free signs or and all that stuff but that'll never happen to me i mean it's that's probably the furthest thing that i would ever you know uh that would ever happen to me and uh had just got married to my high school sweetheart and we had our first child and i was working retail at a store uh in prattville alabama you know i don't know what it was but I started using drugs and I couldn't stop. And uh, I went to rehab within a year. I uh, came out of rehab and started drinking a lot. And um, you know, it, can, it just really continued to get worse. So my wife hung on for for a while. For um, she made it a couple of years. I mean, matter of fact, we dated longer than we actually were married because it was just so bad on her. But so I lost I lost a lot of jobs. And, I uh, lost my uh, first wife, high school sweetheart. And, you know, we had two, we ended up having two kids together and uh, traded those for uh, for drugs and alcohol as well. You know, I, I don't know why you would think somebody would go through all that and they would say, hey, enough's enough, that's it. Well, my story's a little bit different. I didn't really say that, no flag went up for me yet. It continued to spiral down for me and uh, like just completely unmanageable and you know, my life, my life was just a mess, really. It was a, it was a complete mess and a disaster. And it was, it was almost like a nightmare that I, uh, you know, I guess I, I never thought I'd have. You know, I mean, that this is my life. This I'm in it now. You know, I mean, there's no take backs. This is it. I've created this, I've created this entire, in, entire show, and um, it was really hard to look in a mirror. And I remember this guy telling me at one of my jobs there. He said, Jeremy, one day you're going to look in the mirror and you're not going to like who you finally see. And uh, um, you know, he told me that and I didn't really, it didn't even cross my mind what he was saying. I knew life was really, really terrible. You know, I kind of, I kind of blame God now that I look back and think about it, you know, the last few years that, you know, I was, I'd sit in church still. and. And I'd see my kids after the service and they would leave and things like that. I didn't realize I was blaming God for all the choices that I made without him. But it was his fault. So it was just a it was a rough, rough go. Uh, trying to start you know, trying to start a life or, or trying to to live life uh, out of out of uh, high school and college. A couple few years later. After multiple rehabs and uh, multiple jobs lost, and then you know, family started to ask me not to come back. Um, the drugs and alcohol continued to progress, and I uh, started doing things to to get stealing, um, right prescription. I mean, you name it. I did it to get drugs and alcohol. I'm not sure. I'm not sure why uh, in 2012 that that. Uh, you know, that summer of 2012 when it got out of hand that there was a, a moment there where I, it, it finally hit me that I thought you know if, if I if I don't stop this I'm literally not gonna 
I'm gonna continue to do this the rest of my life. Like it was that moment of clear, like I realized I was on the hamster wheel. Um, and I, uh, I realized that if I didn't, if I, if I didn't make a decision to do something else that, um, it was not going to get any better. And I don't know why I had that small moment of clarity and I didn't even stop using drugs after that. But there was a moment there that I realized that this is a, this is redundant. This is not going to stop. So for me, um, I went into a 12 step program and, uh, our 12 step program was spiritual in nature and uh you know it got me comfortable again and uh, introduced me back to uh, a form of spirituality and god again uh, that i was that i could at least you know i i think i i was i didn't think god wanted anything to do with me because i sat in the pews and i would meet drug dealers in the parking lot it was just a, a, just i mean it was just complete disaster you know so now so I think the 12-step program that I'm a part of got me comfortable enough to go back into church again, you know? And it opened, I think it opened the door just enough for me where I wasn't, um, where I, I could trust, uh, I could trust the process of being honest that I've screwed a lot of stuff up. It's about as simple as I can make it. You know, going to that 12-step program uh, led me back into church and um, I ended up getting remarried and having a couple other kids. And uh, so before 2012, my life was a complete disaster and a mess, right? So after 2012, the night I hit my knees and asked God to help me stay clean and sober, I haven't picked up a drug and a drink since. Now, <laughs> um, so not saying that that was the light switch or anything like that, you know, not saying that um, it was, I turned that light off and, and I never went back in that room again. It was more like, hey, you know, I need another power greater than myself to, to live life. And I'm convinced that God uh, put me in a place of surrender to do it. And it just happened for me to be uh, drugs and alcohol. It's weird because, you know, I'm sitting here talking to you guys now and there was a time before that that, you know, I, it's crazy, I, and plus, I'd, I'd never, I'd never do something like that anyway. <laughs> so, you know, but the thing is, I can't really look away now uh, to what God has done in my life. I mean, it's in, it's in, it's really miraculous. Me and my ex-wife, uh, uh, we eat together with with my kids, and uh, our relationships have been restored. But my employer actually likes me, and and tolerable I guess they keep me around for whatever reason which is cool I have friends and things like that but you know I uh, I was baptized a couple of years ago and um, sitting at a church here in Lawrenceville and I, I had been I had been baptized before I had done the ashes over the forehead I had been dumped more than probably most people have been in the church just trying to you know trying to do something you know and uh, you know I, I I got baptized this last time, and, but the, the difference was that, uh, you know, my motive was a lot more clean and clear at that point, because I had been through a lot, and uh, it was almost like, hey, here's your next step, you know, and uh, it takes faith to do it. I don't know why, you know, I, I don't know why that Jeremy's where he's at today, because you know, I don't know if I necessarily deserve it, you know, but um, I would like the opportunity to tell people that, you know, asking God into their life is, uh, uh, is, a, is a decision. And then after that, there's a lot of faith and works behind it. You know, I, I thought God was someone who I just called when I felt like I was in trouble. Um, and I was in a lot of trouble there for a while. So there was there was a lot of uh, prayers to God, you know, but that was the only time I was asking for, was for the repercussions and consequences, you know, that I was, that I was in. But, um, so drugs and alcohol are gone. And, I, and that's, and that's def, that's definitely apparent. And my life's gotten better just because of that. That's, that's been, that's been really cool. But then now there's this thing called Jeremy 
and then there's this thing called life that can be really hard and now I got to live right so I got to live not only sober and clean but got to live life for God you know my journey the last almost six years now has been one of a lot of prayer and a lot of questions and misunderstanding on where I'm going, what I'm doing. But I look back and it's like, man, life looks so much different and so much better. Now, I, I haven't really known where exactly I've been going, you know, as far as how do you do this life thing for me? What do you do if, you, if, if, if you're upset with your wife? What do you do if you're not sure you're being a good dad? What do you do if you're, um, you don't understand something at work, right? So all these things for me is, you know, I look back and why maybe I did a lot of the things I was doing. And um, I think for me, uh, God today is the, the new answer, the new solution, and God is more powerful than I am. But I think it takes a lot of work to continue to surrender to God because when I pray on my knees in the morning, an hour later, you know, I can I can take I can take my will back, and I, I feel my will when I take it back. There's no God there. There's it's completely self-centered, self-will, and I, I, there's a big big difference about that too. So I think today, you know, the biggest thing for me is to to continue to seek God. There's a there's a there's actually a passage in. Uh, uh, some literature that says God doesn't make too hard terms for those who honestly seek Him, and uh, it's 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 incredibly insane to me that you know the 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 destruction back in my past um, I didn't necessarily walk up walk out of very easily. It's 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 definitely hard when you wake up to the fact that you've you've put yourself in a really bad spot. And uh, you don't see any sunlight and you, you don't see any blue skies, really, you know. And um, that's where I think the, the, the faith and the trust thing happened with God. I, don't, I wish I could hear God all the time. I wish he was just saying, hey, man, just take a right right there. For me, I don't know if it's that easy. I think it's almost like a, a trust thing. And hopefully the decision is a good decision that I'm making. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I uh, I'm, I'm just grateful that, that, uh, you know, today, I know I could be a, a good dad. I know I can work on being a better dad. You know, try to be a, a better husband. Try to be a better employee. All these things. I know I'm not. Uh, I'm never gonna arrive, and I know I'm human too. And I know, just recently in, in service, uh, they were saying that you know I can never earn God's love. I can only humbly receive it. And that for me was a big deal because. You know, I thought I had to earn all this stuff back, you know. I think by just uh, trusting the process and trusting men that are close to God and have walked that, you know, in front of me, I think that's, I think that's a big deal. All right, cool. That's hard. <laughs>